Mark Zuckerberg and Meta just released Llama 3.1, which has 405 billion parameters. If you're like me and have no idea what that means, let's ask it directly to find out. So apparently that's the size of the model in terms of context so that it can give you better responses. So that's pretty awesome. But they're now claiming that this is better than GPT, Claude, and all the major AI competitors right now. The crazy thing is, is this is open source. That means they're not trying to profit off this right now. They're not charging you to use it. It's 100% free. You can download the code and run it on your own computer. You don't need to pay them for API keys or to use the service. So let's look over some of these benchmarks and let's see if this is true. So if we come to their official blog post for this release, we can see that they have some takeaways uh, talking about how it works, mainly that it's a 405 billion parameter model, which means again, that it's very, very large, that it has uh, a lot of capabilities now to answer questions better, to perform tasks better, things like that, just because it is so much larger than their older models. Um, we can see that in some of these evaluations, it's beating uh, GPT and Claude in a lot of ways, including um, general, math, some reasoning, um, tool use, and longer context, uh, as well as multilingual. So that's actually really, really cool to see. Again, considering this is an open source model, that it's 100% free, we can download it and run it on our own computer, servers, things like that. Um, this is actually very, very impressive and to date, this is the most powerful open source model on the market. So a huge leap forward for open source AI and a huge leap forward for Llama. You can see also comparing it to some of the older Llama models that it's beating those as well. They're 8 billion and 70 billion parameter models. Uh, we have some human evaluations as well. It's winning some, it's tying some, and it's losing in some cases. But again, for an open source model, this is huge. This is a very, very big deal. Um, they go into some of the architecture of the model, how the model works, um, you know, instructions on how to use it. So we're not going to get into all this. It's kind of boring stuff. Um, so I'm going to jump in and I'm going to show you a few things. I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, I'm going to show you some benchmarks that actual people are using on Twitter to show you what people are using with this model right now and how they're using it. And then at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you how to hack it and do whatever you want with it. So that's for educational purposes only. Don't use that for anything malicious, but I am gonna show you that because I think it's really, really cool. So there's a few ways to use this model right now. Uh, basically, the easiest way that I found is with Hugging Face. So Hugging Face, I'll put this link in the description. Um, you can basically create a, an account with them and be able to ask questions and basically use it just like ChatGPT. Um, and again, this is open source. So that's one way to use it. The other way to use it is to actually download the whole model and run it locally. So you can literally come in here, download this and run it locally and, and set this up on your own computer. So you can run this model without an inter internet connection at all, which is really, really cool. Um, but I don't know how practical that is right now, unless you have a very, very big computer set up um, with very, very powerful computers with you know fast GPUs. Um, I don't know that that's really doable. Uh, I saw a post recently, someone with a 4090, which is the most powerful GPU right now. Um, in terms of consumer GPUs, and they were barely able to get it running. Um, I did see something really cool though. So this guy set it up uh, I just here got the with new two running. MacBooks. Oh, um, so he basically has this model running across two MacBooks, um, and he is getting it to work. So, you know, if you have two MacBooks to spare, you could run it locally. Um, but again, I think the easiest way to do this is to just run it through something like Hugging Face. The other thing you could do is actually just go to meta.ai. So Meta actually offers this for free. So all you have to do is log in with your Facebook or Instagram account. Um, you can come in here, you're gonna see preview the new um, you know, model. I can hit try it and we can go ahead and start previewing this. So that's pretty easy and we can, we can start using this right away. We can create images, do whatever we want with this, with this new model. So that's really, really cool. So let's get into some of the things that people are doing with it now. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I thought was really, really cool. So let's go over some of the benchmark stuff. So we saw what they showed us were benchmarks, but let's see some live examples. So this was actually viral on Twitter for a while, this 9.1199, which is bigger. So GPT, for some reason, has a problem answering this and keeps, keeps saying that 9.11 is bigger than 9.9. .9. So um, we they put it to the test here, and he basically found that not only is Llama answering this properly, um, but they're actually working pretty fast to do that. So this is really, really cool. Um, another thing he did here um, was, was come in here and 
um, you know, ask it for like content creation. So a lot of these next ones are just going to be content creation. So LinkedIn headlines, um, he's asking for suggestions for multiple headlines. He only got one from GPT-4. He got five from Llama and the ones from GPT weren't even formatted properly. So the ones from Llama were actually, um, more responses and better responses, which is really cool. Um, he's working on a business plan here, um, basically saying that he's very impressed with the with the llama response for the business plan. Um, I think the the direct comparison here with with GPT um, isn't necessarily that one one. Uh, he was saying that it was a little too generic and that llama wins here. But after I looked this over, I thought they both did a pretty decent job. But again, another really cool you know thing for llama to be able to do. Um, cold email. So he's he's basically using it to send cold emails. This is huge right now. People are using AI to do this a lot. And um, he's, he's showing how uh, Llama was able to do that as well. He says he prefers the GPT-4 tone, uh, but, but Llama was able to do this also. Um, and then he did a, a LinkedIn invitation, um, again, just like a cold outreach type of thing. And you're seeing that Llama is winning that as well. So Llama's really, really good. Um, let's go over some other really cool stuff I've seen people doing with it. So there's actually something called Grok. It's an app you can download on your iPhone, um, where you can basically download that and you can set up any of these, um, LLMs on your, on your phone to, to actually have, you know, live AI responses on your cell phone. Um, he's setting that up here with the new Llama 3.1 and he's just showing how easy this is to use. Uh, he basically shakes it, asks it a question and it's answering these, um, using AI really, really quickly. So really cool stuff how you can just set this up now on your iPhone and just have this open source model running in the background and doing whatever you needed to do. I thought that was really awesome. Uh, this thread I thought was really cool too. So he basically goes over some of the stuff it can do. So, um, this guy basically created a chat I'll show you how very, to, very quickly, um, using llama, which I thought was really cool. A lot of code stuff. So that's, you know, we don't want to get in the weeds there, but I, I just thought, you know, what it was actually able to do if we come to the end of this video, um, is pretty awesome. So um, some of the other stuff, so he basically was able to create an open AI API. So like I was saying, you know, open AI, Claude, things like that, you need to create an API key and then run it on your server and things like that. So using Llama, you don't have to do that. And he's showing here in this example, how he was able to basically create his own API locally without any internet connection and be able to run the software and get excellent quality AI responses for his software locally and basically set up his own API key. So that was really cool as well. Uh, we went over this one. Um, so, you know, he's using 3.1 to do code assist with VS code. So kind of in my last video, I was talking about how, how I use VS code. So what's really cool now is you can actually have it write code for you directly in your VS code. So if you, if you are writing code, um, if you're not using something like cursor and you want to use llama to do this for you, I thought that was really, really awesome. And he kind of breaks down how to do that. Um, so more people going through some of the, you know, sort of theoretical, stuff, you know, this is kind of philosophical, things like that. So he was impressed with that response. This I thought was really cool. So basically when you're, so this is on meta.ai, what I was showing you earlier. And so he's basically asking it to create an image for him. And you can see how he's, as he's typing, it's actually editing the image as he's typing. So it's changing it as he's changing what he's typing there. So I thought that was really, really awesome how it can do that on the fly. So you can just see how fast this model is too. I mean, it's really, really incredible. An example of him using it for reasoning, um, planning, things like that, which is really cool. Uh, again, using Llama with Grok that I was saying earlier, um, he basically was able to create a whole itinerary for a trip um, to Toronto very, very quickly. So you can see how insanely fast this is. I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, someone set up, this guy Pietro is awesome. He's the one who set up the Claude engineer that I used in my last video. Um, he actually created that totally open source. And so he's using it to create a chat, like a, a chat bot. Again, you could just use um, Hugging Face to do something like that, but I thought that was pretty cool. We went over this one as well. Um, same thing, just using um, Llama to, to, to have a code assist in VS Code. So some really, really cool stuff. Um, so that's a lot of what it can do. Now, what I, again, think is, is really, really cool is the fact that you can run this locally. So I could set this up on a server, you know, spin up a server that's very powerful and run this and be able to do a lot. I can train these models to do a lot for me and not have to worry about all the API key usage and things like that, or the limits you get with Claude that are really, really annoying. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is that you can actually hack these LLMs. So I don't recommend doing this for anything illegal. I don't recommend doing this at all. In fact, I'm not even gonna show you the prompt for this. What I am gonna tell you is there's this guy called Pliny the Prompter on Twitter. This is his Twitter handle. And you can come in and you can actually try this yourself. Um, 
I'm not going to tell you that I tried this myself, but I can just tell you that a lot of people have and that it works. Uh, it doesn't only work with Llama. It actually works with other LLMs too. I might make a full video on that later. Uh, use this at your own discretion. Use this legally. Um, but yes, you can actually do that as well. So that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give me a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos on AI. I'm also gonna give you videos on how to make money online. So if you wanna learn how to do that, subscribe to my newsletter. It's in the description below. Um, and I'm also gonna be making videos on that as well. So stay tuned for more.